One of the most amazing and remote places we have been is Chaco Canyon in Northwest New Mexico. Chaco Canyon is a peaceful valley where numerous giant stone castles still exist. Enormous ceremonial pits called kivas still dot the landscape and monuments to celestial worship still rule. Getting to the National Park is a bumpy dirt road journey that is well worth the adventure. Over several videos, we will take you on a trek across the remote New Mexico desert to this sacred and mysterious place they call Chaco. So we are on our way to Chaco Canyon. Um, it's, it's remote area. And it actually is not a bad drive from uh, Aztec where we're staying, which is just north of here. Um, it's probably about, we're probably about an hour in. Um, it takes about an hour and a half to get to the visitor center. You'll see that it got behind me that it does at a certain point go from asphalt to dirt road. And we're not at the visitor center yet. Um, and I also was under the impression that it was so remote that we had to gas up in um, Aztec or Bloomfield. And there's actually a gas station, a Sinclair, right when you turn off on off of the 550 um, onto this road. So if you're low on gas, but you definitely should fill up um, at that Sinclair or when you're staying up in Bloomfield or up in Aztec. You can also stay in Farmington. Um, but they're perfect distance to the park. There's only one campground here. I hear it fills up pretty quickly and I hear it's primitive. Um, and so really watch your time too. You can't get in here and hike until seven o'clock at this time. The visitor center doesn't open till nine and you have to be out uh, leaving the park by five o'clock. So according to their website, they said that the road's rough for about four and a half miles. So we'll see if it's really four and a half miles or more um, because it's... Slight left onto County Route 7950. It's, sports. it's not like we have to climb boulders and move some trees out of the way or anything. <laughs> yeah. Been I on think, those roads. I mean, we've been on a lot of back end roads and... It's just a shitty dirt road. So I, I don't advise bringing RVs down here <laughs> when the road's real washboardy. I mean, we have really aggressive uh, off-roading tires on our Jeep and we're getting vibrated to death. It's it's really washboardy. I mean, you can see just by the camera if my stabilization's not working. Um, it's it's pretty pretty washboardy. So we are seeing some campers back here, but gosh, I wouldn't want to be his refrigerator. What's inside his refrigerator when he goes through that washboard road? It scramble his eggs. <laughs> it totally scramble his eggs. Day trail. <laughs> so there's a sign that says end of San Juan County maintenance. And it's exactly where the road goes to crap. Where they're just not maintaining it at all, that county. San Juan County. San Juan County is not maintaining it. I mean, we're going 10 miles an hour. Well, now I know how the people on the Oregon Trail felt. <laughs> or Santa Fe Trail in this area. My stabilizer on my camera is probably really fixing this this shot. I'm bouncing around a lot more. Oh, like yeah, yeah, I'm, Here, I'll show you the, cam the other camera. <laughs> we'll really show you how we're bouncing around. After 45 minutes on the worst dirt road ever, we checked in to the visitor center to get our day pass. Then our first stop was the mystical Fajada Butte, the place that says so much about the intelligence and advancements of the Chacoan people who once occupied this valley. On top of Fajada Butte, Chacoans tracked the movement of the sun and the seasons. They had placed three large slabs on top of the butte 
that creates a dagger shadow onto a spiral petroglyph to mark the sun's position on the summer and winter solstice and the equinox. The Chakwins had sophisticated knowledge of the sun and moon, not only on this structure, but all through the valley. They used this knowledge to plan their agriculture, to set ceremonial calendars, to integrate the physical and spiritual worlds, and to seek balance and harmony for all people. This sacred butte is closed to all access due to its fragile and spiritual nature. Today, Fajada Butte is a sacred place for the Pueblo, Hopi, and Navajo peoples. The butte figures prominently in their oral histories, migration stories, and ongoing traditions, revealing their connection to the land. Please, when you visit this canyon, respect the land and structures you come across. So let's go look at some of the amazing structures they used for this purpose. So right from the visitor center, you can go out to Una Vida, and it's just like right there, about a half a mile down that way. But it's just gorgeous. I was like, I don't want to leave. <laughs> All right, so we're going on the loop. It's like a nine and a half mile loop and it's one way. So we'll stop at the first um, ruins that I believe is pronounced uh, Hugo, Hugo Pabe. Excuse me if I'm mispronouncing that particular one. There are several giant structures scattered around the valley and on the mesas above. Hugo Pabe is just one of the smaller structures. These structures are called great houses, and only about 5% of the population lived in them. The culture was one of the haves and have-nots. The haves having knowledge of the skies, grand-scale building, agriculture, and more. This knowledge kept the population in control. The have-nots lived in small huts that are long gone. Hugo Pavi is considered to be unexcavated, but is thought to have about 140 rooms and rose to at least three floors. The structure is built in a chocolate style of a large D, which turns out to have a connection to the sun and moon's paths. All the great houses have a classic plaza and great kiva for ceremonial gatherings. The construction of Hugo Pavi has been dated to be over a thousand years old. The Chaco people began to build in the valley on a grand scale in the mid 800s. It is not entirely clear why the people left Chaco Canyon but prolonged drought and disease is the most popular explanation. It was around this exodus time that communities in other places in the region grew in size and importance. And as mentioned before, is thought that the Chacoans became the Pueblo, Hopi, and Navajo people. We are at Ungo Pave. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, this is probably, this is not as big as the other ones are. Um, you can see the butte from here, it's beautiful. We just had some weather roll in, but it's rolling out now, so we're hoping the temperature goes up. But right now it's kind of cool. Um, so make sure that you always wear layers and that you uh, bring warm clothes because it's gone from freezing to when the sun comes out and I just have to start, you know, getting more in a short sleeves. So always keep that in mind. Also bring food with you. There's nothing out here. Um, so bring your lunch with you and plenty of water, especially if you're here in the summer, it gets hot out here. So look how perfect these corners are. <laughs> <laughs> the 90th I mean, look at this wall. Look, 
Look how straight that wall is. Just perfect. I mean, seriously, look at how straight this is. It just literally, it just disappears when you get to a certain angle because it's just, you know, and this is a ruin. So imagine how straight it was in its day. Oh wow, this is more extensive than I thought it was. This was a good size. You know, even though this is in ruins, look how intricate that masonry work is. I mean, that's like a mosaic. Just piece by piece by piece. I mean, it's pretty amazing. And this culture was here from 850 to about 1250 AD. Um, I mean, that's pretty amazing. They do have evidence that they, you know, that they traded with the Mayans and that they kind of used some of their rituals. This is very extensive. Such a pretty walk with the sun coming out. Boy, that blends in there. It's hard to, you know. When I first drove up, I didn't see how big this was because it blends so well into the rock face. But I mean, look at this view. The sun's starting to come out. The storm is flowing over. Oh, wow. There's even more over there. They're all over. Do you see those? This is so worth that washboard road coming out here. I mean, it really is. It's just beautiful. I mean, again, look at that wall. <laughs> it just is perfect. Mr. Martini was uh, just commenting how good the acoustics are. Here, do it. Yeah, for the concert. Echo. Yeah. <laughs> you can just, it just bounces off this back wall. Well, you know, I hear Keith Richards played here once. <laughs> he and Willie Nelson. It was for the Ancients uh, Annual Music Festival. <laughs> <laughs> my god so this particular one is not even the big one <laughs> the big ones that we're going to and we've been hiking around it for quite some time and it's very extensive um, but the other ones that we're going to are, are even bigger see the beams coming through that these were for the beams and then the, well the rounded ones were for beams these were vents these ones were vents so the people didn't live at the great houses the elite families did and so they lived out in the outskirts of the great houses and then, then they came into the kibas for religious ceremonies but just these elite families would pass on the traditions of being able to read the night skies and the sun and it was sacred knowledge and it was also a way of controlling the people so when you look at these honeycomb structures people didn't live in those honeycombs they those were more for structural purposes um, but the great families, uh, the elite families, did live in the great houses. So make sure when you're at the visitor center that you pay $250 a piece for these guidebooks. Um, these will really help you when you're out in the ruins. So they basically are numbered out 
on the sites, um, you know, with number one, number two, and stuff. And these are your guides. And these are about $2.50 a piece. You can actually buy these in advance. I've seen them on Amazon if you wanted to read ahead. So when you come out here, make sure you stay on the trail. Remember, this is a sacred place to not only the Navajo, but the Hopi and the Pueblo Indians. Um, I've seen some, you know, people out here that don't seem to show respect for where they're at. And just, you know, stay on the trail. Do not go tracing through the desert. The trails are here for a reason. Um, do not remove rock from the walls and the, or go into areas that you're not supposed to. Respect the land. I'm almost there. Shaken to death. <laughs> Gimme power. 